Hi folks, today we're here in the Arroyo Seco and we're looking at the large agave plant and thank you for joining me today, Mo. Sure. Okay, now I've we run into the agave plant about as often as we do the yucca plant with these long straight leaves and on occasion I will take an agave leaf and strip it and get the fiber out and show people how to make the cordage. This was widely used among the Native Americans. You'll find uh, a good example in Paul Campbell's Survival Skills of Native California, how people extracted the fiber and they made nets and rope. And it's also in my um, Guide to Wild Foods and Useful Plants. But it's a fiber plant. It's also a plant that produced food. When the shoot came up, people ate the shoot like you can do the yucca. They ate the flowers, they ate the fruits. So this was a valuable plant to have in the desert. Um, when you actually cut the plant at the middle, they would extract fiber, uh, excuse me, they would extract water and this was the source of what they called agua miel, or, or, or polque. Polque is when it's fermenting, and then they would make tequila hmm. out of this plant. So everybody likes this plant because it's the source of tequila. But it's a unique plant. It gives you a lot of good fiber. It gives you food. It gives you water. And additionally, um, and, and by the way, I would add that there's, there's very few plants that will actually give you a water. And this one doesn't always do that. But if you're there at the right time and you cut, cut the central spike and hollow it out, water seeps into it and you can drink that. It's a little bit slimy, a little bit sweet, uh, but even cactus, you're, you're eating your water. You're not exactly drinking your water. Now, if you notice on the leaf, you can see the pattern of the previous leaf, right? Because all the leaves are pressed together and as they unfold outward, they leave the impression on this epidermal layer of the leaf. When you work with the plant, you want to be careful of these spikes. But uh, today I want to show you one of the uh, unique, ouch, one of the unique aspects of the agave. I'm going to first take off the edge with my knife. And I'm going to take off this edge with my knife. And some of you may be aware of this, maybe not. A friend of mine told me that many years ago, I think it was in the 70s, he was in the he was in one of the museums in Mexico City and he saw a paper that the Spanish sent back to Spain after they had invaded Mexico and the paper had this imprint on it because they used the agave paper. And now my hands are already feeling a little bit itchy. So you want to be careful of this sap from the leaf. So if you're, if you can, you know, wash my hands. But if you, you can actually peel off. See if I can get an edge. Here we go. I'm peeling off just a little bit. You can peel off the epidermal layer. And it's like a parchment. See, if, so you have to be really careful the way you do it. I'm just doing it quickly here, but you can see how the skin comes off. And if you successfully remove large sheets and then dry it and you uh, add glycerin to it, this was a paper that people used. And it's actually a good, pretty good paper. gets a little brittle if you don't treat it. So even the famous papyrus of Egypt does not produce a ready-to-use paper. So this is the only plant I know of that. And then once you have the long leaves, you can get the fiber. But again, I don't use this because I don't like what it does to my hands. I have to wear gloves or do it under water. So when we want to make fiber, we saw in another video, we take the leaves of the yucca. Okay, we strip the leaves of the yucca. You could do the exact same with the agave, but you have to be careful not to splash yourself. So we'll share these in other videos and uh, check out the yucca one. Thanks again, Mo, for Thank joining you. us.